Today we're talking about the Sonics Oxford Inflator plugin. And this plugin has quickly become one of my favorite plugins for mastering. And if you guys have never heard of it before, this is going to be a good tutorial for you so you can learn about what it actually does because there's really no other plugin out there like it. And in this video, I'm going to show you the three steps on how to set it up properly for mastering. So if you guys want to learn all about the Sonics Oxford Inflator plugin, how to use it for mastering, and how to actually set it up properly. Stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash the like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we're talking about the Sonics Oxford Inflator. So this plugin has been around for a very long time, and I actually just added it to my mastering chain probably about five months ago or so. And I gotta say, I really love it. So the purpose of this video here is to show you the three steps on how to set it when you are mastering a song. Now, what is this plugin? So as you can see down here, the purpose of it is to breathe life into your sound. A unique and powerful plugin to increase loudness without sacrificing sonic quality or dynamic range. Add power and presence to your mix without the pumping of compression. Or use on individual channels to bring them forward and add weight. Perfect to help vocals cut through the mix. So we're not going to be using this on individual tracks or buses. We're just going to be strictly using it on the master bus for mastering. So let's scroll down here. So here's some features here. So louder mixes without the issues associated with compressors, as mentioned earlier, so this does not use compression. Add apparent dynamic range to previous clipped signals. Simple user interface. Flexible direct and band split modes. A longtime secret weapon of audio professionals. And it is their best selling plugin. So you know it must be good then. All right, so before we get further into this video, I do wanna mention I have a playlist popping up in the top right corner to my mixing and mastering tutorials. If you guys want to get better at mixing and mastering and learn some cool techniques, definitely check that playlist out after this video. Since you're watching this video, I think you guys might find some videos within that playlist that you might like. So with that being said, let's actually get further into this video and let's talk about the first step in setting up this for mastering, which is setting the input level. All right, so I got the Oxford inflator here open and I have it as the last insert on my master bus here. Now we'll talk about placement when we get further into this tutorial on where you can actually place this plugin. But for this particular scenario, we're putting it last in the chain. So, we're gonna start with the input section right here. So the goal of this here is to get this as close to zero without actually hitting red, which would be clipping, okay? That's what we wanna do. So we're gonna play the loudest part of this song and then we're gonna get as close to zero and that's gonna be where we set our input. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we turn off the clip button right here, otherwise we won't actually see it clip over here. So I'm gonna turn this off here so let's now give it a listen and let's set our input level. Cool, so I'm feeling good about that. So I set the input to 5.43 dBs and we are not clipping, but we're getting very close to it. So let's move on to step two, which is setting the parameters in our effects section. All right, so in our effects section here, we are going to re-enable the clip button now that we have our input set. 
Now, you have a couple options in here. So you're definitely gonna wanna have the effect in button enabled because that's the actual effect that's gonna give you your apparent loudness as we turn this up. And the band split I never use, but it's an option if you want to use it. It basically splits apart their frequencies into three separate bands. And I don't believe the manual actually tells you how the bands are split, but just know it's probably your low, mids, and highs. I don't know where the crossover points are, but that's what it does. So essentially it can give you more control, but it does say that you have the potential for clipping if you do enable that. So again, I don't ever use it, but it's there if you want to try it or mess with it. Okay, so the effect knob here, or fader, this is actually what we've turned up to get our loudness. Now, I recommend running this at 100%. It's that simple. Turn this all the way up to get 100% of the effect. There's really no reason to use this at any less, all right? And then the curve over here, this actually kind of shapes the tonality of the sound. And what I kind of notice is maybe the higher you go with it here, maybe it gets a little bit brighter and maybe a little bit lower, it gets a little bit more warmer, okay? So I also never use this fader here because I work really hard to get a solid frequency balance before I even get to this plugin in my mastering chain. But it's there if you want to use it. So in this tutorial, all we really have to do is play the uh, music here and turn the effect all the way up. And you're gonna get to hear the overall volume go way up. So let's give it a listen. All right, pretty cool. So it got a lot bigger sounding and it got louder. Now it definitely didn't sound like it got compressed or smashed at all. So that's essentially why we want to use this plugin because you know, compressors and limiters can make things sound actually smaller where this thing actually makes things sound bigger while getting louder. So that's why I love this plugin. So let's move on to our last step, which is setting the output level. All right, so for the output level, this kind of depends on where you are using this in the chain and maybe what you are releasing this on. So if you are putting this at the very end and you're releasing this on streaming mediums, I would recommend setting this at negative one dB or negative two dB. Uh, for me personally, I would do negative one dB just to help with any confusion. Just set it at negative one dB and you'll be good. Uh, if you're doing this at CD, you can actually do it at negative 0.1 or negative 0.2. Now, I know we don't really talk about CD much anymore, but if that helps. <laughs> um, now, if you're not using this as the last plugin in your chain, you really can set the output at whatever you want. And what I mean by that is, if you kind of want to use it as a as a clipper plugin, as, as I want to call it, um, you could put it before another brick wall limiter in your mastering chain. And this is actually what I do. This is, I'm not gonna call it a secret, but I actually set it at negative two dB and I run it just the way that you're seeing it in this, but then I run it into my brick wall limiter and then I use my brick wall limiter to get that last dB up basically, because I do want to have my stuff be at negative one dB on the way out because that's what I look at for streaming mediums, okay? So that's kind of the way that I use it. So again, it kind of depends how you're using this plugin on how you would set your output level. In our scenario, in this tutorial, I would set this at negative one dB, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. Let me put this down at negative one. That should be easier just to type it. Cool. 
So let's give this a listen now. And what we should see is we should not see any clipping over here. If you guys were watching the Master Fader earlier, we were definitely hitting some red over here on it. Now with this at negative one dB, we should not be seeing any red. All right, so let's give it a listen. All right, so our master meter is looking good. We are not clipping. And essentially, that is all it takes to use the Oxford Inflator by Sonics. So I hope if you guys had any confusion on how this plugin works and what it actually does, that I cleared that up for you. So if you guys ended up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.